Madagascar's unique history sets it apart from most regions around the world. Unlike other areas of the world rich in Paleolithic or Neolithic remnants, this island witnessed human arrivals rather late. It wasn't until around the 1st century BCE, or approximately 2100 years ago, it was during this time that skilled individuals proficient in the use of iron tools first set foot on this fascinating land. While some archaeologists speculate about the possibility of human habitation predating this era, only two purported stone tools from the Neolithic period have been discovered so far. Yet the authenticity of these stone artifacts as human handiwork remains a subject of skepticism among many scholars, adding an air of mystery to Madagascar's early human history. So who were these initial settlers on this East African island, and where did they originate? Join on this intriguing voyage through history. Before we embark, I'd like to express my gratitude for your channel visit, and I sincerely hope you find the upcoming video enjoyable. Current data suggests that human settlement on Madagascar likely coincided with the emergence of vibrant maritime trade in the Indian Ocean beginning roughly 3,000 years ago. Archaeological findings from the first millennium of human occupation frequently unveil trade goods from the northern and eastern peripheries of the Indian Ocean. This suggests that early settlers gravitated towards the coastal regions of Madagascar, implying that their primary motivation in settling the island was to tap into the riches of the Indian Ocean trade. While the island's interior teemed with resources for subsistence agriculture, it remained largely sparsely populated during these initial centuries of human dwelling. One plausible explanation for the reluctance of early Madagascans to farm the interior lies in the daunting expense associated with constructing seaworthy vessels or securing passage on ships capable of navigating the vast Indian Ocean, luxuries largely beyond the reach of subsistence farmers. The inland expanse of Emerina stands out as a well-preserved haven for archaeologists, boasting tens of thousands of documented sites of human habitation. Intriguingly, the earliest known site within this trove dates back only to the 13th century. Linguistic evidence lends credence to the theory that the island's west coast witnessed the initial wave of settlement, implying that Madagascar's earliest inhabitants must have journeyed from the East African coast. The island's geographical closeness to the African continent might lead one to assume that the initial inhabitants of Madagascar arrived from the East African coast. Nevertheless, this assumption is not accurate. Thus, the question arises, who were the pioneering settlers and what was their origin? In today's video, we aim to uncover that story. Interestingly, despite the region's geographical proximity to Bantu-speaking Africa, the Malagasy language belongs to the distant western Malayo-Polynesian branch of the Austronesian language family. Malagasy language incorporates numerous Bantu words and features phonetic and grammatical elements of Bantu origin. This linguistic amalgamation renders Malagasy a unique tapestry of Asian, African, and even Islamic cultural influences, a mosaic that finds no parallel elsewhere in the world. Austronesian-speaking peoples have a geographical reach that far outstrips the next largest cultural linguistic group, the Indo-Europeans, having cultivated a remarkable mastery of seafaring from ancient times, rivaling even that of Europeans in this regard. Consider Polynesia alone, the easternmost realm within the Austronesian world, spanning from New Zealand and Hawaii to Easter Island. When superimposed on Eurasia, its expanse stretches from England across Europe and Asia to the Aleutians, extending southward almost to the tip of India. Linguists propose that the Austronesian language originated in Taiwan and subsequently spread throughout Southeast Asia and the Pacific Ocean. However, this should not be misconstrued to imply that all contemporary Austronesian-speaking people possess genetic ancestry from Taiwan or that all facets of present-day Austronesian culture trace their roots back to Taiwan. Neolithic discoveries linked to Taiwan can be traced back to 4300 BCE with the subsequent diffusion of these cultures into Southeast Asia. The Neolithic societies in Southeast Asia were founded upon agriculture and animal domestication, and this way of life appears to have spread swiftly, by at least 3000 to 2500 BCE, Austronesian culture had become predominant in Southeast Asia, 
and around 2000 BCE, Neolithic Austronesian communities appear to have established a presence throughout mainland Southeast Asia, encompassing the Malay Peninsula, and they seem to have reached Indonesia by around 1500 BCE. The Austronesians embarked on a remarkable trans-Pacific migration, reaching the Marquesas around 200 BCE and subsequently colonized Hawaii and Easter Island by approximately 500 BCE. During Japan's Yayoi period, Austronesian people, likely of Javanese origin, introduced advanced metalworking techniques to Japan, then inhabited by hunter-gatherers. Evidence of this encounter remains in the form of pottery, metalwork, and even Javanese rice, or Javanica bulu. For this, it's not so strange to suggest that Indonesians first began to spread into the Indian Ocean and eventually reached Madagascar as well as East Africa around this time. The Indonesian settlement of Madagascar was intricately tied to expansive trade networks that stretched from Southeast Asia to China on one end and Rome on the other. These networks wielded significant influence on the formation of states in Indonesia. By at least 500 and 200 BCE, the Malacca Straits and the Java Sea had become integral components of a vast trading system linking the Mediterranean and Han China. This transformation was driven by the rise of states in southern China and parts of India, facilitating dissemination of advanced metallurgical techniques throughout Southeast Asia. By this juncture, Southeast Asia had already developed advanced maritime technologies and possessed considerable navigational expertise, surpassing their continental neighbors. Javanese states by this era had instituted extensive distribution systems, exporting local crops, managing the valuable spices of the eastern islands, and manufacturing bronze axes that found their way into trade with other islands. The initial wave of Indonesian settlers in Madagascar hailed from the interior of Kalimantan, especially members of the southeast Barito group who spoke Manyan or a closely related language. What makes this migration intriguing, however, is the fact that the Barito people were not known for their seafaring traditions. The Manyan and their neighboring communities were primarily forest dwellers rather than seasoned sailors. While some Malagasy practiced wet rice farming, Manyan typically engaged in dry rice farming. This raises the perplexing question of how and why forest-dwelling inland communities ended up residing on a relatively remote island located at the far end of a vast ocean. Portuguese records from the 16th century recount encounters with Javanese individuals in Madagascar. This should not come as a surprise given that by the 8th century, the Javanese had extended their influence to distant regions, including North Vietnam and Cambodia. Furthermore, the north coast of Java remained one of Southeast Asia's primary shipbuilding centers well into the 16th century. The Medina Kingdom of Madagascar that arose on the island in the 17th century exhibited administrative and cultural traits that bore a striking resemblance to those of the Indianized Malays and Javanese, as opposed to the Manyan societies. This suggests the possibility that the Manyan people were brought to Madagascar by Malays or Javanese. Given that the Manyan were not known for their seafaring abilities, it seems unlikely that they were transported to Madagascar to serve aboard ships. Rather, it appears more plausible that the Manyan were recruited to provide labor for rice cultivation. This labor was essential to ensuring that traders had a local food supply, enabling them to engage in trade in Africa and store those goods on the island. The legacy of this early encounter can still be found on the culture and language of the island today. Over subsequent centuries since its initial colonization, Madagascar has welcomed an array of settlers hailing from diverse origins, including Bantu, Arab, South Asian, Chinese, and later European peoples. Presently, the island's populace appears to be predominantly descended from a blend of Austronesian and Bantu settlers. And with that, we conclude our concise exploration of Madagascar's ancient history, shedding light on its initial settlement by a small community from the distant Malay archipelago. However, it's important to acknowledge that our understanding is still evolving of this time period. There remains a wealth of knowledge to uncover regarding the early migration of Austronesian people to Madagascar, and research is actively ongoing. 
But before we conclude, I want to express my gratitude once more for your visit, and I sincerely hope you found the video engaging and informative. If you found this content enjoyable, please consider liking and subscribing to stay informed about future updates. I look forward to having you with us again, and until next time, farewell.